mass demonstrations since the beginning of the economic crisis. An estimated 35,000 people gathered from all over the country. Armed with banners and flags, the protesters embarked on a several hour long march through the heart of London. Organized by a rainbow alliance of more than 100 trade unions, church groups and charities, the Put People First march was united by a common theme, jobs, justice and climate. The colorful procession ended up in Hyde Park for a peaceful afternoon rally. We won't accept the old politics, we won't accept the old financial institutions anymore. From now on, we're going to put people first. Thousands of people marched through London determined to fight for a fundamental change. And although this fight has been peaceful so far, it is just the first event in a chain of protests that some say could lead to the worst public disorder in a decade. This year marks 10 years since the city of London was taken over by a wave of riots and vandalism. Today, fears of potential violence remain. How to keep warm during the credit crunch? Burn the banker. That's a call from one of the most notorious anarchist websites. The anarchist's blog has held their own small rally at Hyde Park Corner. This is just the start of the fucking week, right? We're anarchists. We're back on the streets. We believe in anarchy. The working class is back on the stage of history where it fucking needs to be as an active fucking player. Thank you so much. It is these kind of emotions the police fears might paralyze the city of London next week during the G20 summit. I think people are right to feel angry and feel right to start questioning the, the role of the free market and, 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 and capitalism. So I think you know, people are angry. People are really, really angry. So I think we could, and personally, I'm dedicated to nonviolence. But uh, you know, if, what happens on Wednesday is yet to be seen. With the bankers likely to be the prime target, staff in the city are being advised to dress down and postpone their meetings. I mean, obviously there's going to be disruption, uh, therefore it might be a good idea to stagger you know, people's departure times or arrival times is to, to ensure that uh, the meetings uh, that you are going to have uh, are going to take place, so maybe you want to put them off for, for a couple of days. The bill for the unprecedented police operation, the most expensive in the British history, will total around and eight million pounds, while the full cost of the summit may near 50 million. Nick Rumana, owner of the first Dr. Martin's shop in the world, may not be out there in the streets, but says his feelings about the whole thing are shared by many. It's going to cost an enormous amount of resources in police and in, you know, surveillance on, on the protesters. And, you know, obviously it's going to, going to bid us for millions of pounds, and that's our taxpayers' money. And I just think it's, it's ludicrous. You know, they could spend that on a hospital or on a baby care unit. It. You know, there's a hundred things that I could reel off the top of my head to spend rather than, you know, hosting a load of uh, fat politicians that, you know, just talk the same old talk, whichever city they come to. And as the summit gets closer, the voice of the people is likely to get louder. Daria Pushkova, RT, London.